Does that look weird leaning forward? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Tremaine. I used to run Big Brother magazine, and after that, I helped create Jackass and a bunch of other terrible shows that you might or might not have seen. Here's a bunch of my crap. Penis pops. That's where it all started, right here. This box was very expensive to make. This was a stupid business decision, but fun to do if you were in my shoes. But when everyone got them, they, uh, we just mailed them normal. We didn't put them in boxes and stuff. So everyone's were just blown out, like all the stuff. Like all the, what was fun about it was all the advertisers got to put stickers and random stuff inside, uh, assorted goodies. But we didn't take care in shipping them, so they all got crushed. Like this one's even kind of crushed, and I don't even think this one ever went to the mail. But uh, we got old Tim Gavin to pose for a photo. Um, we sat there with Clay and made all these little dicks. I don't know if you can see, but there's like ants all over the bowl too. <laughs> there is one larger penis than the rest of them too. <laughs> Look at how young Gavin is. This, this is like before Fat Face ever kicked in. This is the most expensive thing we ever did for Big Brother. Rocco was super psyched on this idea. I think this was his idea to deliver the magazine in a cereal box. And then when, the, when it came to paying for it, he got bummed out just because it was expensive. Big Brother was a really fun and fucked up experience. It's one of Bam's paintings. It's called Almost at Sea. So Steve Rocco, you know, controversial owner of World Industries, and back in the day, World Industries like took over skateboarding. And in those early days, he was doing these shocking ads. Like, he was just doing fucked up ads that he didn't care. He just wanted to, you know, do funny, outrageous shit. And he did this one ad. Uh, who was it trying to shoot themselves in the head? It was, uh, it not Jason. Dude, I'm just totally fucking spacing. So Rocco's doing all these fucked up ads. You know, he owned Blind and World Industries at the time and was doing really well. Basically had all the best skateboarders and uh, and submitted an ad to Trans World and Thrasher and got rejected from both. It was an ad with Gabriel Rodriguez holding a gun to his head because this trick he was trying to do, could, he couldn't pull it or something. And they both rejected it. And at that time, Rocco was very much, you know, fuck the middle man. Like, I'll, I'll <laughs> like, we'll print our own shirts. I'll buy all the printing equipment. Like, we'll print our own boards. We'll. There was just no middleman. He just would hire, buy and hire everybody. And he said, all right, fuck it, I'll just, I'll start my own magazine. I don't need you guys to. And so he started his own magazine, Big Brother. And then, so they did one episode, they did one issue. Uh, like, Nottis worked on it and it just didn't come out how he envisioned it. And uh, they did it all in house. So. At that point, he was looking for someone who had some, a little more publishing experience, and so uh, Spike recommended me for the gig. I'd just come off doing a BMX magazine, and I was freelancing for a snowboard magazine at the time. And uh, so I went in there and made my pitch, and the rest is history, I guess. And it was just a ma and pa, <laughs> like, do-it-yourself magazine. And Rocco was cool, just do whatever you want, just make sure it's outrageous. and. Uh, I mean, I don't even think he said that. I just knew, you know, his company, he wanted it to be a little bit raw. He had some ideas, you know. Like, he really wanted to, what did he want to do? Oh, uh, instead of pro spotlights, he was really into doing host, he wanted to do a host spotlight where, like, you interview a prostitute. I don't think we ever even did that for him. That, that was his one thing. He really wanted a host spotlight, and we never did it. <laughs> we did a lot of other stuff. This one was spiral bound. I don't know, can you see that? Can I take it out? first issue I did was the, the big one that had uh, Daniel Castillo on the cover. I have it at home, but I didn't bring it, I'm sorry. But here's the, the second issue I did, which we for some reason called our 10th anniversary issue. I think uh, Transworld at the time was calling, they, they just come out with their 10th anniversary or, I don't know why, we just thought our, our third issue should be the 10th anniversary. Here's a, an old, typical blind ad, this is Operation Manhood. At the age of 16, this is when Guy was a virgin. I think um, Rock was trying to auction off his virginity. This is like the best article ever, the San Francisco article that Earl wrote. I think it got him into trouble. This is the one I think that had Chris Sen's girlfriend, where Earl sort of, CSG we call her, she became a character in the magazine. CSG, Chris Sen's girlfriend. I did all the layout. 
Some of it's good and some of it's really not very good. <laughs> but it was a lot of work. We changed the logo every time. We're also the first magazine to do video grabs. Let me see better quality. They don't always look the best, but that's back when skateboarding was just getting super technical and consistency wasn't really a priority. So you'd burn 50 rolls of film trying to get one trick. It gets expensive after a while. So video grabs were actually very good. Oh, here's a, here's a very, <laughs> this was like the first <laughs> article that got us on the news. This one has Wee Man in it, although Poncho got the cover, but he's, this was the Wee Man article. Um, let's open that up. Wee Man actually worked for us back then. He was uh, the head of our subscriptions department where he would uh, put all of the magazines in an envelope and then take, put them in big, these like post office duffel bags and take it to the post office. Uh, this thing fell. Um, and he wasn't the most diligent worker. I think I had to fire him. <laughs>